welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. <coughs> Here do. So I am doing a live Facebook stream at the same time as recording the podcast. So I'm recording a Let Me Bore You to Sleep podcast. Yeah, and video in a live stream onto Facebook at the same time. So, yeah, that's it. That's a boring introduction. I'll only listen or watch when you can safely close your eyes because this is supposed to be boring. However, as we all know, I am incredibly exciting as a person. Amazingly so. I mean, just, just looking at me, looking at me. You can feel the excitement, I'm sure. Um, I've just changed me top. That's the whole story, really. I don't, don't know why I mentioned it, but I changed me top. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to interact with people that come online and say hello. So the first person is Nadia, who says, Happy New Year and good night, as I know. I will fall asleep soon. Nadia, I said Nadia, I think it's Nadia, isn't it? Nadia, are you saying I'm boring? Are you, are you calling me boring? <laughs> <coughs> I always cough a little, have I got a little bit of a cough at the moment? Um, so I might cough a little bit, but you know, any big coughs I'll edit out of the actual podcast. But in the video, you'll hear it. To there. It's okay to cough. Oh man, I know this isn't really relevant or very festive. But my friend, my neighbour downstairs, we we're in a we've been in the same bubble throughout the whole kind of coronavirus thing. So we go into each other's houses, even though you're not supposed to go into each other's places, but we're, we've been in each other's bubble for the whole time. So we, we do go out and he comes in it and stuff. So there, sue me, don't. And we was up here watching a bit of telly, seeing the new year in, uh, which we do, I think we do it every year really. Because he's got no one, and I've got no one, like, to see. Because we can't go out. He, he's more likely to go out if there's something to do, but I'd stay in anyway. Anyway, we're watching it. He was sitting over the other side of the room. Because even though he comes into the, the flat, I still keep my distance. But that's partly because I don't like being near humans. Anyway, so I'm lucky like that. So the two metre distance, I should think, should be about 20 metres, generally. I don't sit next to people, if I can possibly... I'm talking all year round, throughout my entire life. Uh, I keep my distance. William says, Happy New Year, Jason. Hi, William. Hello. I will try to say hello to everybody that comments uh, whilst I'm on here. So it'll be a little bit different from the normal... Let me bore you to sleep where I just talk and talk. But I guess it'll still be boring. I don't think I'm that boring. I don't know. Anyway, I I bent down to pick up my um I said to my friend, I said You've you've not seen there's something that you've not seen and uh, I wanted to show it to him, like a TV show. It was the Orville, he's not seen it. Christopher says, Happy New Year. Hi, Christopher. Happy New Year to you. He'd never seen the Orville, and he's a big fan of Family Guy and um, the bloke that does Family Guy. 
So I said, well, The Orville was a TV show that he produced and made and stars in and written. And he said he hadn't seen it, so I thought, well, perhaps we'll watch an episode, see if it's on streaming. So I get the, I can't find this. Well, it's not I can't find it, it's in your hand. I mean, at the time, I couldn't find this, which is always to the side of me. Like, his dog had been on here earlier. But I thought to myself, I wouldn't normally let his dog on there unless it was clear. You know, just for the dog, you know, so the dog can relax and stuff. I wouldn't, so come, come on, Rover. Because um, all dogs are called Rover, because I'm still in the 1970s. And he couldn't. He couldn't get on, you know, so he got on it. And I thought, well, unless it's stuck up his bum, where is it? I can't find it. Then I realised it's stuck up mine. I know. And I thought, I know where it is. Boston, hey, Boston, chicky, happy new year. Whee! Me and Boston, we go back, don't we? Don't we, Boston? We go way back. Um... Before the internet, even, in fact. We go so far back, we used to communicate. I used to communicate with smoke signals. Um, but she used to... Uh, telex. She used to send uh, telexes. Is it telexes? What are they called? Anyway, that, was, uh, that didn't really work, that joke. So, let's pretend it didn't happen. Couldn't find the remote. Could not find the remote anywhere. So in the end, I thought, I know where it is. But it wasn't. It wasn't on the table. It wasn't under the pizza box. It wasn't on the other table. It wasn't on the other table. It wasn't in the shoe. It wasn't in the fridge. Microwave. You know, none of the normal places. So what I did is I thought, ah. Because this seat I've got here, that you can see, I'm not reclining in it because I'll be too far away from the and a microphone so I want to be close enough to be heard and um, but not close enough to be understood smoke signal I know Boston I was trying to get a joke out of that so I like we've been communicating so long I was thinking about what's the, the earliest communication I was thinking smoke signals and then I thought yeah but you might have been more advanced than us but then I'm just trying to think what would be something more better than that. And telex, what were they called? You know, we used to like send, it was before faxes, facsimile, before facsimiles. Um, I think they were telexes and offices used to use them and I could not. Morse code, yeah. Morse code, Morse code. I was thinking, this is I'm going off in a random uh, thing here. Two things I was thinking about. Three things I've been thinking about. Four things, but I can only tell you about three things. Seven things, but I can tell you about three things. Anyway, I'll try and remember the ones I was going to tell you about. Um... Kissy, hello, thank you, by the way, I'd, oh man, I'm so unorganised and I've got a send a couple of messages, so I want to say thank you to those of you that have sent me uh, a couple of PayPal gifts uh, in the last couple of hours and I was waiting, I didn't want to be rude while my friend was here and start like texting and stuff. Uh, so I haven't got round, so I was going to sort of send a thank you message. So I'll say thank you now, but I will, um, I'll actually do it at the end of this recording and send an actual personal thank you. And thank you to everyone, those that are listening after the event on, whether you're listening or not, on Facebook, the video, or if you're listening on the podcast, which will be on the podcast. 
the Let Me Boy to Sleep, plus, you know, other places. Thank you to everybody that has supported me during 2020. Never know this, I normally say 2020, but, you know, everyone that supported me during that year, the last year, in whatever, re there's so many different ways that I've been supported. Uh, financially, kind words, even, um, thank you, Kissy, uh, Happy New Year 2021, yay! Happy New Year to you as well. I, U, C, <laughs> Boston's at I, dash, 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 J, J, D, E, G. Juicy, Juicy. What did I say? Cause juicy. Juicy. Oh, man. Juicy. Sorry. You know what it is? The, re the reason, the reason Kissy and Juicy have both got similar names. They're the only two people that I've ever, not the only two people. I know Juicy. I know. I was talking to someone else, Juicy. Kissy. But she's got a similar spelt name to you. I got it wrong. I got it wrong. Like Juicy, I don't know if you remember, you sent me a message, the first message you sent to me ages ago, telling me how to pronounce your name. And you told me about 15 times, and I still keep getting it wrong. To the point where I think you actually once thanked me for getting it right. Um, it's, oh. I'm English, what can I say? I, I'm no good at stuff like that. It's been inbred into my brain to any any name that isn't Alan or Tom or Steve or Julie is hard for me, you know? <laughs> it's, uh, but there is someone called Kissy, but it's not spelt Kissy. Does that make sense? So I, I get a little bit mixed up between the two. Names, not the two people, but the, the names. Um, because funny enough, I remember Juicy more by your surname than by your first name. For some reason, just the name rather. But then I also remember things, conversations and bits and bobs. So Yeah, exactly. Kissy, I mean, Juicy says... <laughs> It's like pronouncing your last name wrong. The thing is, I pronounce my last name wrong. I'll open me, I'll open me hands up to it. <coughs> Nobody in my family says Newland. They don't, not one of them. It's Newland. My nan, I think my nanny even used to say Newly. <laughs> You're Jason Newly. <laughs> um... She liked being called. She liked being called Mrs. Newland. My nan did. She's quite formal, which is quite weird. His uh, her name was Eileen, and so the priest would call her Eileen. Her friends would call her Eileen. But if somebody phoned up from, I don't know, the gas board or something. She'd like to be called Mrs. Newland. Newland. So they find out saying, oh, is that Eileen? Is that Eileen? Whatever, like they, no, nah, Mrs. Newland. And I think the reason is because once my granddad died, she, I think it was that. I think it was because it was his name. And she, that was kind of all she, not all she had, but that was kind of, it became more important to her, I think. I don't know, I'm just guessing. Anyway, my idea is, Juicy says it's like Newark. I always thought it was New Ark, but I was wrong. Well, um, and Boston says, Juicy, Happy New Year. That's what I'm reading out messages. They're talking to each other now. They're bored of me. Don't leave me now. Um, there's, I don't know if you know this, 
but in England, um, it's a common joke about Americans when they visit London. Um, it's not cruel, it's just making fun of their pronunciation, which I think should be pronounced. Pronunciation would make sense, wouldn't it? Not pronunciation, pronounce, because you're pronouncing it. But that's wrong, of course. And Juicy says, Boston Chicky, Happy New Year to you. Annika says, Happy New Year, Mucka. Hey, Annika, Happy New Year. Blimey, there's too many people. There's too many people. I'm trying to keep track of it. Arrow, Arrow says, Happy New Year. Hello, Happy New Year, Arrow. Um, Boston says... No, no, we don't need you anymore. So stop sending so many messages. I can't keep track. I'm trying to. <laughs> Juicy, we like to bore you now, Jake. I can't get bored. There's too many messages. I'm trying to keep track. And I don't have anything to 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 look at. Because I'm looking at the screen on the, TV, on the phone, which is what I'm pointing at. And then I'm not saying don't send messages because it's good. That's, it's a good thing. Just. It only, it's like such a tiny little area where you can see the messages. Literally two lines. So once one more message goes, it goes up again. That was boring, wasn't it? That was. So. I can't remember what I was saying. What was I saying? Did you know, did you see that message, the, the comment I got? I forget the name of... I can't just, can't just put, I'm not showing off at all, but I do deal with lots of people. <laughs> There's a lot of people sometimes send me messages. It, I don't always... Uh, they might not always be like big long messages, but sometimes just short messages or things. And I lose track of who says who sometimes. I'll be honest. I'm 50, come on, give me a break. I think I'm doing all right for 50. <laughs> I'm gonna get rid of this screen so that you can see me without the blaring light on my glasses. Boston, what comment? Oh, I can't believe it. Boston, you, you are very cheeky. You're a cheeky little chicken. You are, a cheeky little chicky. So instead of me waffling on, going off on a tangent, Boston's actually <laughs> pulling me back. <laughs> pulling me back to, uh, <laughs> to the particular subject matter that I was spurting out. And you, okay, I'm coming back to the comment. You did the Dr. Evil face. But... I'm Dr. E. You are young. I will be 52 this month, says Juicy. Yeah, compared to you, I am young, aren't I? You're right. Thank you. Blimey, I feel like a little baby now. Little bald baby. <laughs> I'm... I... 52. No, you're still 51. Juicy. When it... I Honestly, I was doing that all last year. Seriously, I was, I was end of August, 50. The whole of 2020, nearly 50, nearly 50, nearly 50. I wasn't embracing staying in my 40s. And I think I should have done. Okay, I've got a message here from Arrow. I'm going to run. I've got a really bad headache. Thanks for neighbours. Oh, thanks for neighbours fireworks. Fireworks. Have a good night. I'll just let you know if you go. I've got some uh, podcasts that might help you with your headache. But sometimes it's easier just to take a, head, take a headache tablet. To be fair, but it might be something really good because they're very relaxing. But we had fireworks here. Couldn't really hear them because they were very distanced. But. When me and my friend are watching telly, yeah, midnight, I turned off the TV programme. Well, it, it ended, but I said, no, I'm not putting anything else on. I want to see the new year in with you. 
so I can say Happy New Year, in per you know what I mean? Like, at the time, I want to be able to hear Big Ben, boom, boom, all that stuff. Didn't hear that. But uh, nothing on TV. There was no fireworks, nothing. Advertised. I'm pointing to the TV, by the way. And I couldn't figure it out. But then, on the news, it was on the, on the internet, no fireworks in London this year, no fireworks at Big Ben, and all that stuff they normally have. Because they didn't want crowds, whatever reason. Which is fair enough, I don't want crowds, but come on. After the year we've had, we need some fireworks. I think we deserve some fireworks. It's just a nice, it's a, it's a nice thing. I mean, it's not like the government don't waste enough money so they can waste a, another million or so on some fireworks. You know? I mean, perhaps what I was thinking, well, the government, why don't they just do a backhander? Why don't one of the ministers give the firework contract to one of their mates, one of their eating friends? Then we can get some fireworks. I don't mind a little bit of, bit of uh, dodgy dealing if it means we get a firework this way. Well... My friend goes downstairs. No, my friend's still there. That's it. He's still there. We're skipping through, and suddenly there's a firework display on the TV. And I'm thinking it's Australia because I'd seen earlier that Australia had had a fireworks display. And there's a news bulletin going through the different countries that had them, but how we're not having them at Big Ben. And people were on the news saying, oh, it's a shame. And then they showed Wuhan. <laughs> I found this very funny, but also a little bit emotional. A few emotions came up. Wuhan in China had a firework display. Huge crowds. Huge crowds. And there's just something, I don't know, just feels, you know, just like, um... I don't know if I want to see that. I don't know. I just, I know other countries were getting to big crowds as well, but here, I'm in lockdown, literally. It's tier four is lockdown. Only supermarkets are open. Everything else is closed, pretty much. So, we're not allowed to. We're allowed to go out. It's not as strict as you have to stay on, really. But it's not as strict as like you can't go out of the house. But you're not allowed to mingle and stuff. And then just see these big crowds. It's just, ah, it gets a bit annoying. A little bit. The weird thing is, I don't want to be in those crowds. <laughs> That's the ironic thing. I've got no interest to be in a crowd because I know that I want to go to the toilet. Seriously, even if I went to the toilet, I reckon even if I did a wee... Before, so if I did a wee in a helicopter and they dropped me down from the helicopter into the middle of the crowd, as soon as that rope ladder went back, I'd want to do another wee. And it's not because of my bladder, it's just, well, I guess it's, to, it concerns my bladder. But it's just, you know, like, oh great, now I can't go to the toilet, I want to. So, only central shops are open. Yep. You know what? They've gone about essential shops. My friend needed to go and get some clothes. And he was going to go into town tomorrow. And he was saying, can you find... Because I went online to find out if there's any trains and what times they were, if they cost anything. Because in London, the train service is free. On New Year's Day. Uh, at least it used to be. But here, of course, you should only do essential travel anyway. So, but he said, Oh, I need to get some clothes. So he's going to go into town. I said, There's no point. He said, What do you mean? And I said, Hey, <laughs> dude, like, he's aware. He's like, What do you mean? And I said, they're all closed. We're in lockdown. They're all closed. Tier four. It's only 
supermarkets are open and takeaways. You can still get takeaways. I'm pretty sure. Had Hadassah Jade Azrael says, Hi Jason. I tell you what, if you change your name any more often, honestly, I'm just going to start forgetting what your actual name is. Happy New Year to you and David. Hello. Uh, Boston. So, do you remember you've changed your name just to, to remind people what your actual name is? Because so people might... I don't know if that helps. Because I can't see your picture because it's so small on the screen. But, uh... Oh, did you know, Boston, did you know um, Sebastian's still putting messages on my Facebook page and on my messages, on my videos and stuff? On my, my posts? But he's, uh, he still does. I try to unblock him, but I don't know how to. I try to delete, put a message back to him. But he's so rude. Uh... Juicy says, funny thing is that the liquor store is open. They consider that essential. We, off licenses aren't open. Um, on their own. As I'm pretty sure, no, they wouldn't be. But, I say that, the caveat is, most off licenses are part of, little supermarket shops, little shops like groceries and convenience stores. That's where most of the off licenses are in the UK. There are off licenses that are just off licenses, but pretty much new, a lot of news agents uh, and, you know, these little, sh little shops which are essential, they sell, you know, bread and butter, okay, World War II, lard and dripping, leg of lamb, once a month. It's, so they have alcohol, they have cakes, they have chocolate, all the stuff that to me is essential, but technically isn't. Happy New Year to you as well. Hello. Um, is David watching now? It was, I don't know what time it is at this time of night. In America, you're five, is it six hours behind us. So it's 1.39. So it's about six in the evening, isn't it? On New Year's Eve for you. But in Australia, they've had their New Year's Day and they'll be in bed now. So just as we're starting here, they've gone, they've had it. And they're bye bye's. Um, I had a message from, I wanna say a big hello to Molly, who won't be listening or watching this right now because she's, I mean, I, I'm just assuming she'd probably be in bed because she's in Australia. So hello to Molly and all my Australian listeners. Um, thank you for your support uh, over the last year. And I hope that, you know, 2021 is good for you. Um, of course, that goes the same for most of America. I don't know about Boston, Chicky. don't know. She, okay, Boston as well. I wish you all, everyone in America... Uh, and Canada, New Zealand, South Africa, UK, I forgot my own country, England, the UK, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, Ireland, basically all of the English speaking countries, as well as loads of other countries, so basically I think with the English speaking countries, you kind of got America, Canada, UK, of course. Uh, Scotland, Wales, Ireland, Northern Ireland. 
kind of South Africa, kind of, but but then you got everyone else's people that have learnt English, isn't it? We've all learnt English, haven't we? I don't know why. I just don't know. I don't know how many people. I know people that listen that are from all over the world, uh, European countries where English is not their first language. And I do sometimes wonder what it would be like listening to me where... Because someone told me that... This is someone that works at the garage. She said to me that when she listens to me, she wants to punch me. No, she said when she listens to me, she has to uh, interpret inside her own head what I'm saying. So first of all, she hears it. She says it to herself, interprets it into her own language and interprets it back. Something like that. Um, I wasn't, to be fair, I wasn't taking much notice because she had a low cut top on. But, no, I'm joking. She's, she was lovely. She's, she was pregnant, actually. Not not at that time. Well, she might have been pregnant. I couldn't see inside her uterus. I don't know if she was pregnant at that time. But she got pregnant. And her husband worked there as well before. And he was lovely. Um, he was so big. You got no choice but to call him lovely. He was <laughs> huge. Just size. That. He was nice. Really nice. A nice couple. And she was really friendly. So I used to chat to her. And... She was from Poland, I think, and she moved back. I think she moved back to have the baby or to get married or something. And then I never said goodbye to her because I didn't like her that much. <laughs> no, I didn't say goodbye. I never got to see... I didn't know she was going to leave so quickly. And so I never got to say goodbye. And I used to speak to her, sometimes have nice, like... It wasn't long conversations, but sometimes stand there for 10 minutes and have a chat. And if you do that a couple of times a week, over months and months, you know, you sort of get to know the person a little bit. Got to know a little bit about her life, a little bit about, her, you know, what was going on in stuff. And she's not there anymore. And, um... I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get by. <laughs> so, um, yeah, the message, the comment, Boston, the comment I had was, someone said it was really weird. Because, you know, really weird. You know, I did a video the other day, uh, Facebook with this, I did one of these. Um, was it Christmas Eve or something? Was it? Was it? Was it Christmas Eve? I think it, it might have been Christmas Eve. I can't do it. Wait a second, I'm gonna grab Andre. I can't believe him. Right. This is funny. It's very funny what he's just done. <laughs> he was behind me with his girlfriend. Look who I've got. Look who I've got with me. Oh! Look who's come. Andre, I know where your tongue has just been just now, so you can keep it to yourself for a bit. He, <laughs> he had his girlfriend. Right, he was with his girlfriend over there. He came running over here. I didn't see really what he was doing. I just saw his tail. And he was doing the toilet. His girlfriend was still in his mouth. So the slipper was still in his mouth. 
he had every intention of carrying on. He basically took his girlfriend to the toilet with him. That's the equivalent, literally, of being with your lover in the act of love. And instead of saying, I just threw the pop to the toilet. Picking them up. <laughs> carrying them with you. <laughs> All the way into the bathroom. And holding them in your arms while you go to the toilet. That's what he just did. Now, maybe it's romantic. Maybe you wanted to try something new. I don't know. <laughs> I just think he's a pervert. You're a pervert, aren't you? <laughs> Do you want to say hello to all your fans? Do you want to say hello to all your fans? Do you want to say hello? 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 Has anyone left any messages? I don't know if I've had any message or is it it's just people have stopped, but hello again. Oh yeah, the message I got on a comment saying that I look, after seeing, I don't look like how I sound. And it was, I don't know if the words were a shock to the system. <laughs> I don't feel it was that, but it was like, it was, I find that, see, because I know what I look like. It's a shock to me sometimes. Um, you know, there was a reason in my last place I used to who's that? Who's hello, thank you, whoever's sending the kisses. I can't see who it is. Um, getting out of bed really quickly, getting out of bed, getting out of the bath really quickly. I used to have to be careful because you know. So I didn't slip, and also because I had an injured shoulder. Now I get out of bath really quick, really slowly rather, because there's a mirror opposite my bath, and I don't want to shock myself. Because you think my face is bad, you should see the rest of me. Seriously, some people are like say, "Well, why do you go on camera? You look looking like that." No one says that, but I sometimes I say it to myself. How can I go on camera? You know, looking another way I look. And then I think to myself, but my face is one of the best parts of me. <laughs> it gets worse. As you, the further you go down, it gets worse. Honestly, it's, if you get down to my toes, if you take the socks off, my toes are like, honestly, like a little bag of maggots moving around. Mm, that's my, honestly, it gets worse. Try to make him laugh. I try to make my little baby laugh. I love you, Andre. Yeah, I do. He said to me the other day, he said, Daddy, I said, yeah. He said, why are you only nice to me when there's a camera there? When I'm being filmed? Why, why are you only nice to me? I said, I'm not only nice. He's honestly, he's very rude. I'm always nice to you. The only time he really annoys me is when he scratches at the front door continuously it's like middle of the night that's that's among the only things that really annoy me like that I really get angry at because I'm thinking of the neighbours and I don't want to keep it you know I don't want to sort of cause lots of noise although for some reason at 10 to 2 in the morning I don't seem to care today but I've got the window open but I had to because the heating really warmed this flat up too much Getting hot flushes. I think it might be the menopause. <laughs> the menopause. There you go. Say hello to everyone. Say hello. 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 Those that are listening to the podcast, if you want to, if you haven't seen Andre or oh, you're a fan of Andre. It's worth checking out the 
D and video pod, the video on Facebook, on my Facebook. I don't know how far we are into the. Let me check. I'll check to see how far we are into the podcast. It's about forty minutes. About forty minutes into it. Just so you don't have to watch the whole thing. Who'd want to watch the whole thing? Oh no. No. Oh, it's got wet eyes. Oh, I could eat him up. Honestly. He's trying to get away. I didn't mean it. Not literally. Blimey, Andre. <laughs> I know he doesn't need to go to the toilet because he's already been. He did a wee, I think. That's what I'm telling myself as he's rubbing himself all over me. I'm telling myself that he's not using me as toilet paper. Oh, he's gone. He wanted to... He wanted a drink, basically, so I can't... I can't deny him that. Oh, my goodness. Can I, can I apologise to everyone? The screen was not telling me that there'd been messages. So I've just missed loads and loads of messages. Juicy said she's off to bed. Good night. Boston. So I didn't see any of these messages. So if you're listening to this, or if you didn't listen to it, um, Carol says I'm off to bed, still listening. Carol, hi. I didn't see any of these messages. It didn't come up. That's why a couple of minutes ago I said, there's no one sending any messages now. 7.40 a.m. in Pencil... Pen, Pensacola. I didn't know there was a... I've never heard of that name before. Pen, Pensacola. In Florida. Well, hello, Cindy. I've not heard of that place. I've heard of Florida. But... Or hugs. You'll be fine. I don't know. That was... It's all out of context now, because I can't. <laughs> He's a horn dog, so that was Andre. Molly. Oh, Molly. Molly's watching. Hello. He's an info. Are you talking about me or him? Molly says, hey, hey. We're the monkeys. Hi, Andre and Jason. Hi. Um, hey, Boston. I've seen your ankles, Molly says. What's your problem then? <laughs> Molly, what's your problem? You see me ankles. What? What? What about it? What about it? What, you want to fight? You want to fight? You see my... What if you see my ankles? I think you just stop this gossip. Stop gossiping about my ankles. How could you see my ankles? You live a million miles away. Now, I know we joke about these telescopes and binoculars and stuff, but... And I've tried to look for your bedroom window. Obviously, I've, I do it to everyone, but my binoculars don't go that far. I'm going to move on from this now. I realise it's going weird, but how have you seen my ankles? Huh. Barbara Otto's watching. Hi. Mo Molly says, I was making sure you didn't miss any spots. Um, Cindy says I understand totally. Menopause, menopause, yeah, yeah. Wet eyes, yeah, he's, he's cute. It's really weird, you know, are you, Molly, you're not waving goodbye, are you? You better stay online. Fisty cuffs, yeah. Your ankles start from below your chin. I think you find that that's but are you making fun of one of my chins which chin <laughs> i think personally do i have cute ankles vanessa let's go private let's get rid of this let's get rid of everyone and we'll go into i'll we'll go into a private <laughs> i'll show you me ankles <laughs> i don't know if i've got cute ankles I would say I have 
Um, what do you want to see? I'll show you my ankles. Here we go. Oh no, I should have washed them first. Never mind. I I think my ankles are pretty normal. They, <laughs> they don't smell normal, but they, they don't look... No. Yeah. I think showing you my ankles without looking at them first would be the equivalent of coming on here without making sure that I didn't have any bogeys sticking out my nose or didn't have any cake on my beard. You know what I mean? It's you got to check in the mirror before you do a video. And I just looked at my, my, my ankles and... Well, I peeled my socks off, basically. Um, and... Uh, gonna have to put new socks on now I'm not showing you no, I'm not showing you my ankles <laughs> no you can't make me I I tell you what out of my whole body um, I think the one thing I've got now you're blind <laughs> yeah well I haven't looked at my ankles the retinas are gone. Um, I think the best part of... I've been told by others. People used to tell me that I had nice eyes, but you can't even see my eyes now with my glasses on. Because I don't have... Um, I don't have thick glasses. You know, the like really um, magnifying glass glasses, the really thick ones, where your eyes look really big. So I don't have that. In fact, my eyes probably look smaller without glasses, no, with glasses than without. And these glasses are for reading because the other ones I sat on. My distance glasses I sat on. So they're bendy. They're kind of wonky. Although I did get them straightened a little bit at the opticians a few weeks back. But it's still a bit wonky. Um, but these are in better condition because I just wear them for reading or computer work. Which means I'm sitting still, you know. With the other ones I'm going out and they're getting blown around by the wind. I don't mean lump in the air and stuff. But I've, got, I've got a string attached to them. It's not like the little kite, little glasses kite or anything. But how can you keep a straight face talking about your ankle? Finesse, you haven't seen, have you seen my ankles as well? Blimey. Is this a new thing? Is ankles, are you actually talking about ankles here? Because two of you now. Is it a different thing? Jason's glasses are made of feathers. Molly, me and you, I tell you, I'm so angry with you. I've never been so angry. That's my catchphrase. Have you noticed that? Anyone that listens regularly? I've never been so angry. That's my catchphrase. Ankle. Is ankles a weird word? I always found pants to be a weird word. Like when I was younger, pants. Size. My normal... My normal answer to that is you wouldn't want it in your bum, but... Um, the feet, uh, 10. Size 10. Size 10. Yeah, Boston, you haven't seen... Boston, no one has seen my ankles. No one has... No one... I don't think so. I haven't... I haven't even felt the touch of a lady for a year. That's the, she was the last person to see my ankles. That's when she left, actually. She was fine with everything else. She said, like... I remember her saying on the phone, she said, I can't see you again. I said, what? She said, your ankles. I said, what? She said, look, like, it was enough. I put up with everything else. I liked you. You know, you're a nice person. I thought, we're both getting on a bit. And the physical side of things is going to maybe distinguish at some point. So maybe I could put up with your body and... But not the ankles. Not not the ankles, can't do it. I said, why? She said, do you really need me to tell you? I said, well, I don't really want you to tell me, but... I said, 
are you really telling me that you find my ankles repellent, but you are okay with, you know, Mr. Chipolata? And she said, well, I'm not saying I was okay with Mr. Chipolata, but your ankles. I said, what, what, what? She said, well, listen, right. The fact is, in the summer, we're going to want to go out in public, aren't we? I said, yeah. She said, I like to go to the beach. I said, okay. Well, you're not going to be wearing socks when you're walking on the beach, are you? But you're not going to have Mr. Chipolata out. It'll be packed away inside his little fumble, thimble case or whatever. But you've, you I said, could, could you just move back to the ankles, please? I'm not happy with the way this is going. And she said, yeah, I don't like your ankles. Sorry. Like, that's just rude. What is it? You're all so rude about my ankles. I've got to think about my ankles now. I mean, someone with a face like this should not have an issue with his ankles. It's not fair. It's not fair. I mean, that's... That's, that's like having a stutter and a lisp at the same... You know, it's like one. Give me one. Don't give me both. Let's have a look. No, no, Vanessa, no, no, no. You had your opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Molly, the ankles make or break it. Is it? I I was told, because I used to go jogging, I used to be quite fit. I mean, that's ankle. This is more than ankles harassment. Can you hear him? He's making lots of noise because he's not... Trying to get into the kitchen because the kitchen is clo doors closed. And he hates a closed door. That's his pet peeve, honestly. A closed door ain't happy. Then I, it, it'll, it'll scratch at it for hours. I'll open the door, we'll stick his head in, and then we'll just walk out again. And he'll look up at me, what are you doing there? <laughs> it's like, give me scratch, you woke me up. And he'll say, I'll wake you up. Really? I said, yeah, you woke me up. He said, well, why'd you get out of bed for? He said, because you've been scratching at that door for hours. He said, if it's been hours, how come you've just woken up then? How do you know it's been hours if you've just woken up? It's very, very cheeky. He sees my, he bites my ankles, Andre does, Molly. He bites them. That's why. This is sad, right? It's a sad fact. And I don't like it. It's not because I'm grimy. I actually, well, <laughs> I am grimy, but I have to wear my socks in bed all year round. And I don't want to. I don't actually want to wear my socks in bed in the winter, but sometimes it's cold and it's, I like to have my feet outside the bed covers. Um, but the reason I have to have my socks on all year round even when I'm sitting down, it's because Andre will bite my toes when I'm asleep. And if you bite my toes when I'm asleep, there's a chance I'm gonna kick you in the head, you know, and I have, I've, I've kicked him once by, just because it was my natural reaction. And uh, he jumped off the bed. All I heard him was just, oh, I'm gonna get you back, get you back for that. And in the summer, you there's something really nice. So I live, I sleep, on, I sleep on my own. Apart from when Andre's in the bed, but generally it's me. Ankles have bit bite, bites and bits, bits and bites. Maybe you should just cut them. Between the two of you, I don't know who's worse. He's mocking me, mocking. Mocking me. Kick me in the head. You better be talking dirty to me. <laughs> I. He. Because I don't know. I mentioned. I used to keep 
he's got his own cage. I used to keep him in the cage at night. Then he got so well behaved. You know, I tested it at night and he wouldn't. He'd like start uh, doing things and, you know, knocking things over and scratching at the front door. So I put him back in his cage. But as he's got older, he likes being out. Doesn't want to be in his cage at all. And for the last year, maybe longer, he's slept outside. He sleeps wherever he wants to sleep. Sometimes it's on my bed. He goes through periods. But it's, sometimes it's on my bed. Sometimes he, you know, I wake up and he's there. Sometimes I go to sleep and he's there and he's not there when I wake up. And I get up to make sure he hasn't been crushed. Um, the rest of the time he sleeps in here or he's different places he sleeps. And I like... In the summer, I quite like to be pretty much naked because it's warm and it's nice to just lay there. To be fair, I just like to be able to lay naked and not have anyone laughing. It's quite, you know, it's quite nice to to know that no one's going to laugh. And maybe have the window open a little bit coolish, you know. And... I can't do that with him because I was going to say worst scenario isn't that it'll bite my toes is it really but with my ankles but he he will he's done it so many times that I can't um, I can't I can't test it I can't you know and it's a shame because I like I like that feeling. I do take my socks off sometimes. In the summer, if I'm sitting on a recliner chair, he can't get to my feet when I'm on a recliner because my feet are up. So I take my socks off in the summer, you know, when I'm doing that. And there are times in the summer where you can't wear socks. It's just like, wow. You know, I uh, can't believe I'm talking about socks for so much. That's about standard, isn't it? It's about my... Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so I don't... What was it? Ankles. My ankle... I was told... Quite a few times I've got nice legs. Molly says she's glad that I've got the couch down. It looks comfy. Basically, what happened is my friend downstairs... He, this is his, well, this was his, and he had two. He had two seater that this is, and a three seater. And I, he basically, because you know, my, my chair, I had to ch chuck it out, it just was not working at all, it was beyond anything, and I was sitting in a chair that's over there, but you can't see, it's a brown chair. Very good if you're visiting somebody, very, very good for that. Not to take, obviously it's too, too, they don't want to carry a big chair around with them. But it's nice if the chair's already in the house or in the, in the room that you're visiting. It's a fairly nice comfy chair to sit in when you're talking, but not for long periods of time. It's not comfortable enough to sort of just relax and watch telly. But it's great for something like meditation or relaxation because you've got your back straight. There's nothing, nowhere for your head to go, but it's quite a nice, good for that, but not for this, if you know what I mean. Uh, relaxing with your feet up, watching telly or maybe dozing off or whatever. And then I've got another chair that my friend gave me, and I want to try and get rid of that because it's in the way. It's more like an office chair, but it swings around and it rocks a little bit. It's comfortable, but it wasn't comfortable enough to sort of sit in for too long. And then last week or the week before, my friend, I think it was the week before last, my friend said, Do you want a chair? 
And I was thinking, no, I've got enough of your chairs. So I've got two of his, three of his chairs. There's a foldable one as well. And uh, he said, no, do you want my recliner? I said, what? Huh? He's, I said, first thing I was thinking is, how the heck are we going to get it up here? Because this is heavy. It's as heavy as a washing machine. Maybe. But, you know, it's heavy. Proper heavy. Heavy duty thing. It ain't no... This one, whoever bought this originally, because it wasn't him, he got it second hand or third hand, I don't know. But whoever... Because it's worn a little bit. But he couldn't wear as quickly as the other one. Quickly. Because it's proper sturdy. It's very... Yeah, this is expensive when it got bought, I'd say. And we got it up here, it was so heavy. And it fits perfect because there's two chairs. I can put my stuff on the other chair next to me, like the remote controls, books, whatever. The, if I'm doing something on a laptop, I can put it over there. So it's nice, it's like another table, so it can't put drinks on now stuff but everything else pretty much is fine <sighs> i got to stop here because they are just making fun of me on here first of all have you any resolutions Molly says fair enough nice message nice message yeah nice message and then I'm talking about because I'm in the middle of talking about this chair the, the sofa thing the message is strong Jason, wink, wink, Vanessa. Molly says, Jason carried it up on his ankles. Vanessa says, oh, strong ankles. Vanessa says, we love you. That's why we're having fun. I've never been so angry. <laughs> I like the word furious. I remember when I had this job, one of my sales jobs, and there was this, this female, and she used to use that word, it was so furious. And it reminded me of my dad when I was a little kid. Well, I was a kid. I was little, but I was a kid. I was, all, I was little all the way through being a kid. Just little. Still little, really. Just bigger version of being little. And he used to say, oh, this makes me furious. And I can't help but laugh at that word. It's almost like one of the most pathetic words. It's like an adult acting like a child when they use words like that. I'm furious. Fury. Basically, I'm having a tantrum. I'm an adult, but I'm having a tantrum. <laughs> oh, any resolutions? Um... Um, uh, not so much resolutions, but, 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 oh, I'll, 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 I'll finish this the thing I was saying earlier. I lifted up the settee to find this remote control. It was lying on the floor. And the process the process of bending down and lifting up the settee, it's very heavy, released an extraordinary amount of gas that lasted for a good 10 seconds. So I suppose learning how to not fart in front of women would be good. I don't know how how to how to hold in farts without feeling ill. I don't know how to how it's not really a resolution, is it? It's a bit childish I guess. I don't know. I mean I know I'm usually so adult, such a 
mature person normally. The best part ever when not expected are the best. Yeah, I tell you, one of the funniest farts, Vanessa, the very fu funniest farts, I, this is between me and you, is I was, <laughs> I was at my nan's, and this is when she was still living at the house that she shared with my granddad, but she was there on her own. So I was visiting, and she was, we were sitting down having a cup of tea, and I think, well, but I don't know what, she got up anyway. <laughs> she got up and walked towards the, the, the sink, and she let off the biggest fart. Honestly, like, really loud. Wasn't smelly because she's perfect, but it was definitely uh, very loud, and she didn't acknowledge it. Now, I don't think she noticed it. I think, um, and I, I don't know if it's true, but I've noticed it with older people. I'm talking maybe my age, but, you know, I've been around a few, especially like in meditation and stuff, and people stand up and let off a massive fart, and they're not aware of it. It's almost that it just pops out on its own. So I'm wondering if, because at the moment I'm, I'm aware of them. I'm, a, I'm aware of them. And I think my worst fart ever was, I've done two really, really bad farts in my life. Uh, I've done more than two really bad. I mean, I've done some... When I had um, gastroenteritis, I did some really bad farts, but I was ill. So as far as I'm concerned, I do not care. Honestly. I, in my 20s, it probably would have been Boston's proud of her fart. You should be. It is a proud thing, a thing to be proud of. Um... The two that I was really, I wasn't proud of these because I didn't mean to do them and I didn't expect them to be as bad as they were. And one of them was quiet. So I was waiting, this is in 1988, I think. I was waiting, I was working in a factory, went round a corner to a cafe to get myself an egg sandwich and funny enough I hadn't actually got the egg sandwich yet which is kind of ironic considering what happened next so there's I'm queuing at the counter there's probably about three people before me possibly two people after me it's like peak you know it's lunch time um, rush hour and it was one of the favourite places for people at the factory you used to go to and some people will buy lots of stuff to take back to their other people that are working, you know, sort of buy lots of sandwiches and coffees and stuff. But there's also people sitting down eating. So if you don't know what a cafe is, if you don't have them where you are, basically um, diner, like a diner, but a much cheaper version, or cheaper, more basic so not, you know, tables aren't cordoned off. It's not all nice. It's usually just a room with some tables dotted around with chairs. And then there'll be a counter where you get the, get the food served. You order your food or whatever. They might have waiters and waitresses just to come and take your order and stuff. This was a really small one. They couldn't have been more than... They probably couldn't fit more than maybe 15, 20 people on the, on the chairs. There's not a lot of space. I ended up living upstairs, funny enough, a couple of years later. And the one of the tenants, he burnt the place down. Um, but yeah, that's another story. I was there in the queue waiting 
and I could feel I needed to have a fart. And I just let it go, but slowly. Let it go very slowly. Just eased it out. Um, crop dusting, exactly, Boston. You need to keep moving, don't you, when you crop dust them? <laughs> you know, it's really a case of you let a little bit out at a time and keep going so it doesn't all stay in one place. Well, I was static standing there and I didn't want this to happen. I, I, it wasn't. It wasn't a badge of honour. I wasn't trying to impress uh, the ladies standing behind me. I, well, <laughs> initially she was standing. Um, and basically I, I let it out. And it is by far among the smelliest ones I've ever done. It smelt like I'd already. It smelt actually like I'd spent the last five years sitting in that cafe eating egg sandwiches one after another for five years. So all I did was eat egg sandwiches. Who's that? That's the egg sandwich, man. And that's. And then built up all that gas and then let it off in one go. That's what it sounded like. There was enough people though in that cafe for me to not have to take uh, responsibility or the blame because it was quiet, it was a silent one. So I did what any normal person would do. I looked around for the culprit. I looked around. I thought, oh, I didn't want to be whoever smelt it, dealt it. I didn't want to be the first one to smell it, you know, or make a big deal about it. But I definitely wanted to, I wanted to be judgmental. I wanted to put that air of judgmentality out there. The, to feel con condemnation towards others, just to, just to, I wanted to f inwardly express anger at how someone could be so disrespectful and inconsiderate around people that were eating. People were eating there. How could someone do something like that? You're eating your food. The taste that you have is only, it's tempus. 90% of your taste is smell. 90% of our taste is smell. So people there eating their egg sandwich. <laughs> or their burger or their chips or their whatever they were eating. You know, breakfast. Opening their mouth. Smelling the food that they're about to put into their mouth. <laughs> all that 90 percent of your taste is smell they would not be able to smell that sandwich i mean i'm just surprised that people could even see each other through the green smoke you know is why they what it felt like there should have been one of those situations where the whole place just went dusty <laughs> as, as it started to calm down you could start to sort of see people through this through the little sparkles of dust and pong it really was bad and i i wasn't to start with i thought oh this is disgusting yeah it should have start the sprinkles the sprinklers coming on i thought now the fire upstairs did that I thought, ah, first of all, well, this, the first thought, if we're honest, is, hmm, have I got time to uh, 
go to the shop and get some new trousers. That's the first, you know, before going back to work. But it's like, because you can move your buttocks around a little bit to sort of, because you can feel wet patches. I'm not, I'm not going to go group, but you can, you can kind of get an idea. I've had my bum for quite a while at that point, like 18 years. So I kind of knew my way around. <laughs> oh, this is a weird, weird, um, weird thing. But anyway, I, that was my first instinct. My second instinct was the first thing I, second thought, the thing I thought was, I hope no one knows it was me because I want my egg sandwich and I don't have time to walk up to the other shop because I've been queuing here for 10 minutes and I just, you know, I wanted the egg sandwich now because I was, I was in the mood, I was in the mood and nothing was gonna stop me. And then people started looking around and I went, mm. but there was no evidence outside of my trousers. There was no evidence. <laughs> that sounds wrong, doesn't it? There was no evidence that it was me. Okay. Now, the person that feels sorry in all this really is my laundrette lady two days later. But that's that's a different story. So, I... I was really embarrassed... And then I'm looking around, trying to like blame other people, like internally with my eyes, with facial expressions. And I looked around and there was beautiful woman sort of kneeling on the floor <laughs> behind me. Vomited. No, she wasn't. <laughs> the weird thing about it is, I still wanted the egg sandwich. Nothing was going to put me off. And she was like, and I, I, I said to her, I know that look. She said, What do you mean? That's a look of guilt. <laughs> so I said to her, <laughs> I, said, I said, I can't believe you'd do something like that <laughs> in a public place where people are eating, but it's food. <laughs> she said it wasn't me. I said, Okay, fair enough. I'm sorry. I'm Jason, by the way. You fancy going out for a drink? <laughs> I wasn't good at chatting up people back then. I still not really. I just let women come to me. Actually, I said that to Andre the other day. I said, he said, we haven't got a girlfriend. I said, no, but I let women come to me. I don't don't push myself onto anyone. I just, and, she's, and he said, so how's that working for you so far? <laughs> you cheeky little... Um, I had a thing the other day. I was at the garage petrol station and I couldn't I went in there bought some stuff and I said to the lady behind the counter uh, she's new she's been there about two three weeks and I said to her is the cash machine working she said what do you mean she said well it wasn't working two nights ago and I just don't want it to take my card because it kept it for about three minutes last time and you know this time of year it's hard to get into the bank and stuff and she said, well, I can test it for you if you like. I was like, wow, that's really friendly. So she came out and of the thing. So I waited for her, opened the door for her. She comes out. My friend's outside. I was really like, I couldn't believe how friendly she was being. And I'd said hello to her before and stuff, like very small chit-chat. And so I'm standing there with my mask on. She's standing there with her mask on. When she gets out, she takes her mask off. Uh, you know, face covering off, and I said, "Wow!" I said, oh, "It's the first time I've seen you without your face covering, without your mask." I said, "You're really pretty." 
you're lovely. She said, oh, thank you. And uh, she said, I haven't seen you without yours either. So um, I took, took my mask off, took my face mask off. And I said, well then, what do you think? And she said, uh, I was going to go and check the machine. Check the card machine, the cash machine. She walked off. So I, the other time that I did a fart, I was in a clothes shop. Was it a bookshop? No, it was a clothes shop. And I was in the men's section. Okay. But, so I didn't expect to be anywhere near women at all. I just, just, I was in the men's section looking at the trousers. Didn't, I looked around, I wasn't anywhere. Even if it's a man around, I was still not going to just let one massive one off. But because there was no one there, I did. Well, but it was a loud one. I, you know, I, 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 in, I thought, I'll enjoy it. I've been mean, letting it build up for probably 15, 20 minutes. It was percolating nicely. And I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll enjoy this one. You know, it's an auditory delight. It's a very lovely thing. So I did. And it was loud. Much louder than I thought it was going to be. And, you know, everything else that goes with those kinds of farts. But... And it was smelly. <laughs> but it was more loud than smelly. But it was still... It was... Um, I feel like Boston, like... It was a drop and run. It was basically... It wasn't one that you stay in. It's... You know, you, you drop it and you get out of that area as soon as you can. So that's what I did. I kept it in till I'd looked at the trousers. There wasn't any that I needed at that moment. Well, I didn't think it, I did until I got home. But I looked at the trousers and I thought, didn't have any in the size that I wanted. Because I, I need to get short, but fat at the same time. <laughs> short and fat, that's, that's the size I get. And I thought, that's it, I haven't got what I want. I thought, hmm, it's a safe place. It's a little bit like, I felt a little bit like Wonder Woman. You know, when one, one Wonder Woman needed to change, I'm talking about the original Wonder Woman, she had to get somewhere where there's no one around before she could turn around and um, sparkle and flash in into a, into a um, costume. Can't remember what kind of costume it was. <laughs> yeah, like it's not etched in my brain for life. Wonder Woman, blimey. I mean, if ever there was, I know it's a cliche, but a gift that keeps on giving, Wonder Woman has been that in my life. Loved it when I was a little kid. Loved it when I was a teenager. Loved it when I was an adult. And now as an old age pensioner, still love it. I like the new Wonder Woman as well, but I just, I was in love with Wonder Woman when I was, a, when I was about eight years old. Seriously. <laughs> Loved her. Um, so I... Okay, moving through. So I was feeling like Wonder Woman who needed to fart. So I thought I'd let off a Wonder Woman fart. I didn't twirl around. I'm not silly. Um, I squatted. But, you know, I did it... If you get your in a right angle, get get everything kind of aligned, the chamber's a bit longer, I think, from the fart chamber. So I don't know if the fart's somewhere around my neck, and so between my neck and my bum is like whoosh, real big, big gush. Um, Molly says and Madonna, Madonna, and Madonna, yeah. Oh man, I tell you, Madonna. Madonna was a crush of mine. Do I wasn't bothered about her when she was first came out. I liked her music. 
And I liked Madonna because of her music, not because of how she looked. I was a big fan of her. Um, I liked her first two albums, but I wasn't bothered. You know, I'd, I'd listen to them on the radio and watch it on top of the pops. But True Blue, that album, uh, and Like a Prayer, two of my favourite albums, out of all the albums I've ever listened to in my life, those two are on the list. It's a long list of albums that I love, but they're definitely on that list. And the True Blue video, no, the Papa Don't Preach video. Wowed me. I fell in love with her, like proper, I was, what, 15 probably? Yeah, 15, 1986. I was 15 and I loved Madonna in that Papa Don't Preach video. And I watched it over and over and over and over again. That's all I'm going to say on that subject. But I loved Madonna. But I also loved the album. Um, so I never really could understand why would people get so caught up in how people look. When just because it's got a nice picture on the cover of the album ultimately they're going to be listening to the music but anyway I'm going to finish this quick story and then I'm going to stop the podcast because the battery is running out on my iPad which means the recording I'm doing could get lost but I don't want that to happen so I'll continue a little bit longer with the video slightly so I won't I don't want to end abruptly don't care about the podcast <laughs> listeners <laughs> I do I do so uh, before I go I just want to say thank you to everyone for listening for, throughout 2020 happy new year 2021 to all my listeners of all my podcasts um, I love you all so um, but before you go, the ending of this fart story is I let off the biggest, echoist, loudest fart with the intention of walking away from it. I wanted to get out from the eye of the storm. I wanted to let the hurricane do its thing and me just move. But, you know, and I turn a corner and there's a beautiful... <laughs> You know, like woman standing there, staring at me. I mean, she, I don't know if she was about to turn a corner. Um, I don't know if she heard the words George Moore Michael turn a different corner, and we never would have met. I never would have smelt that, but she gave me the weirdest look, and I couldn't stop laughing couldn't stop laughing um i tell you oh, i'm gonna go i'm gonna tell you another time i couldn't stop laughing but i'll tell you on the video so everyone listening on the podcast i have to bring it to an end because the battery literally is about to run out i don't want to lose the recording because this is much better quality sound than the video um so I want to go, but I'm going to stay on a video for for the live broadcast for a little while, a little while longer. It's because uh, so thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. And maybe I'll change my little ending um, in the new year. But lots of love. Bye. Right, now I've got rid of them. Let's talk about some real stuff. <laughs> I'm going to save this before it stops because literally I have to export the file onto the... Um, into the cloud in order to save it. Otherwise, I'll lose the recording. And I can't share these videos onto YouTube for some reason. I've tried and tried and tried to get the file to put it onto YouTube and it won't work. 
I don't understand. There's always good, there is a way around it. There's always a way around everything. But I don't know what it is, and it's going to take a little bit of effort. Molly Rose boobs. What are you saying boobs for? What are you saying boobs for? Boobs. I'll. What, I'm going to talk about boobs. You always talk about boobs. I will if you want. Uh, Vanessa says Happy New Year. Love Andre. Much kisses. Thank you for all you do for us, Jason. We appreciate you. Night night. Don't go yet, Vanessa. I'm, not, I'm still here. We've got things to talk about. <laughs> See if you'd have mentioned boobs earlier. You talk about ankles. I don't want to talk about that. Now, if you want to talk about my boobies, um, right, I'm just saving this. So hopefully there's seven percent left on the iPad, and it's quite a big file. It's not actually, it's not that big, it's 39 megabytes, but it was 80 odd minutes. Anyway, I, uh, <laughs> um, oh god, I was going to tell you something, but I forgot what it is. So I'm farting there. Damn it, what was I going to talk about? It was going to be another embarrassing moment with a woman that I was going to tell you. Um, um, it's la, it's laughing. Okay, yeah, right. This is quite a long. See, booze make you forget. You're right, Vanessa, to be fair. Um, they do have a power. They do have a power. <laughs> Just the word. The word. Um, okay. Uh, again, what was I talking about? Laughing, laughing, okay. Laughing that makes boobs jiggle. No, laughing, laughing, laughing. Um, I was in a nightclub. This isn't even going to be on the podcast. This is just, this is special. Now the low battery, I've got 20% left. Oh, blimey. So the phone's now on low battery. Okay. Uh, no, not in South. Oh, no. So, I was in a nightclub. I was probably drunk. I had a few, I had a, a special exclusive story, yeah. I mean, this is probably, I don't know if this is probably quite rude, but, okay, I, I moved away from London, right, and I used to be a DJ for four years. Every weekend, for four years solid, I was a DJ in a comedy club, as well as doing other things, but, so my, my DJ shift would start after the comedy finished. So probably about eleven thirty till two, roughly. So that would be my that would be it Friday Saturday night for four years. So I had I was in my prime, I guess. Really, I was like twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one. That was kind of the years. <laughs> that was the years, and. I had a lot of attention. I had, you know, I felt very confident. I was very confident, or much more confident then than I would be now or was previous. I was a lot younger. Um, people weren't so concerned about ankles back then as they seem to be now. Um, the chipolata didn't look so small when I didn't have a belly. Um, that was the benefit of being skinny back then. Um, I. Yeah, I had quite a few, I dated quite a lot back then. Let me just say that, dated, met a lot of people. Felt fairly confident within myself. I moved away from London because my nan broke her hip and I wanted to be closer to her. And physically, like distance wise. So I left the, the, the DJ job. And I moved away, got a job in a call centre, and I moved away. 
moved to where she, I'm going to get rid of this screen, it's too bright, and she, yes, and I started working in the call centre, met quite a few people, they were all younger than me, I was still only 31, but they were early 20s, but they still invited me out to go to the pub and to nightclubs and stuff. Now, I'd stopped going to nightclubs, apart from the one I worked in, I didn't go out nightclubbing really, but... You know, I thought, okay, fair enough. Every now and then I would. And there was one particular night when I was probably 32, 31, 32. Only a year or so after being, I suppose, you know, just being like a person and all, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But I was just drinking. And I looked over, because my friend was my friend was walking around with he had black bags on his trainers so he got some black bin bags and put them over his trainers so it looked like he had black shoes on so he didn't get kicked out of the club because the trainers weren't allowed so I was laughing at that so I was feeling quite good you know quite upbeat I don't think I hadn't drunk a lot but I had probably three or four pints and I looked over just looking around and I just walk up to a table put because it was an empty table put my glass down on the table just to give my arm a rest um, so I could just have a look around because I didn't people had spread out a bit so I didn't really know where the people I was with were and I looked over, and there was this girl, the female, apparently. She was a, there was a female there. And all I'm going to say is she really wasn't my type, okay? So I'm not going to say anything derogatory. She wasn't my type. Um, at all. At all. She, you know... And she, she said something to me like, "You ain't got, a, you ain't got a chance. Don't even look at me or something like that. Like, don't even think about it." And I started laughing because I spent the previous four years being around lots of people, lots of women, lots of men, lots of different people, and um. Without boasting, I've, I've dated a lot of beautiful women. And I'm sure they've dated lots of handsome men. And me. <laughs> so, but, you know, I'm, for me, it's... I feel all women, especially nice women, people are nice. They're, the beauty comes out anyway if they're nice people. But she really was uh, almost... Ugh. Like looking at me, like, like, uh, I thought, have I got a bogey out of my nose? Have I got, got some poo on my head? I don't, I, what's, what, what is it? Look down to make sure my trousers were still on. Felt behind, moved me, moved me buttocks around just to make sure that that last fart wasn't problematic. Nothing. It's like, oh, well, what's the problem? And then as she said, oh, who, you know, you got no chance or you, you got, well, it's like, I started laughing in the face. I laughed at, I laughed. It was, it turned hysterical because I started thinking about what I was doing a year before that and the previous four years and going further back, actually, to be fair. So... Thinking about, you know, I had girlfriends, I had some lovely, lovely girlfriends, proper girlfriends, not just short term. But a year's the longest girlfriend, I think, or oh, 10 months, but for me, that's a long time. Five hours is a long time, I think, sometimes, but especially for the other person. The thing is, I left the club because I was in such confusion. 
But firstly, I didn't approach her. I had no intention of approaching her. I think I might have smiled at her. Just being friendly, you know? Like, hello. Like, like you do to a fellow dog walker in a park as they're picking up the dog poo. It's that kind of, hello. Yeah, you got to pick your dog poo up as well. I do, yeah, it's annoying, isn't it? See ya. That kind of... Or the way I would say hello to an elderly person. Just to be... F almost to let them know that I'm not a, I'm not a threat. Because, you know, I know an elderly person might look at me and think, oh, that young and that youngster there, what's he up to? No good. With his hoodie on. Um, carrying his machete. So I thought, like, I'll say hello to them, you know? Hello. So that's how I was doing with her. I didn't think of her as an old person. I'm, you know, a pensioner or someone picking up poo. I'm just giving that as an example. I was just being... I think I might have said hello or I might have just nodded, smiled. That was it. It wasn't an approach or anything. And I laughed when she... So she basically rejected me when I had... It was not that kind of situation to be rejected. I've been rejected enough times to know... Um, a correct rejection, <laughs> if that is right. Um, yeah. And I've had to reject enough people to know as well. So it's, there are different ways of doing it. And she was definitely rejecting me. But I wasn't. Miscommunication, I, I would say. I found it so funny and I'm talking the funniest thing I've ever ever heard or seen or done in my life nothing has ever been funnier before or since this and I started laughing I started thinking about the past and I mean back then you think it's, this is 20 years ago nearly now 19 years ago 18 years ago so I was a lot Younger, fit, fitter, I suppose, slimmer. Um, I had more hair, wasn't wearing glasses. Um, my ankles were lovely. And I left the club and I was laughing. I looked at the doorman and I was laughing. And I was walking the streets, going home. And it was probably about a 20 minute walk. And I was laughing. Hysterically. The whole journey. I had someone come out and say. What are, you, what are you looking at? What are you doing? What are you doing? Some drunk person trying to start a fight. And I laughed at them. <laughs> that made me laugh even more as well. I was like. I couldn't stop laughing. Could not stop. And I kept laughing. And it, I think it almost sent me into some kind of weird psychosis. I was like, I couldn't. I couldn't grasp my head around. It was the equivalent, really, in a sense, of... A four-year-old walking up to you and saying, I'm going to beat you up. It's funny. Doesn't mean they can't beat you up, but it's still funny, you know. Or, uh, I remember I was, in a, I was in a restaurant years ago. This is when I was at university. Having lunch with my university friends. And some old man tried to attack me with his walking stick. On one level, you know, it was, a, it was a, an interesting situation. And if someone goes to attack you, you, there's a natural instincts kick in. But on the same side, I found it hilarious. Because he sneaked up behind me with his walking stick and he was going like that. And my friend opposite me said, but I already had my prick. I learned to use my peripherals a long time ago. So all I saw was this bloke like that. 
about to hit me with this, this big stick on the back of my head. And to be fair, I mean, that is enough to cause proper serious damage. So I want to hit, because it's a soft spot there, isn't there? Um, unless, of course, you're over the age of five months old and it's not soft anymore, but that could have hurt me. Um, so what I did is, I'm not sure if I took the stick off him and pushed him over. No, I didn't do that. Either I took the stick off him or I blocked it. Or I just stood up and started laughing at him. I can't remember. But I knew there was laughter there. And the reason he attacked me is because I tried to help him earlier on. It's true. True story. He looked like he was about to... He, looked, he, was, sh he was putting his coat up on the coat rack. And he started shaking. And he started looking like he was losing his balance. So I get up. I go up to check if he's all right. I mean, genuinely, didn't know the bloke. Just wanted to make sure he was okay. That annoyed him. That upset him. And I was like, I'm oh, sorry, okay. And he had a go at me. I said, it's fine. He said, so he started moaning, saying, well, you try and live with arthritis. It's not... Okay, sorry. I was just trying to help. Just make sure you're okay. And I backed away. And I went back to my table. That was it. Then other people in the restaurant started having a go at him. Someone was saying, look, he was only trying to help you. We were about to get, I was about to get up as well. Too, obviously not quick enough really. They didn't care that much, did you? Anyway, I was about to get up and all this stuff. He started arguing with them and telling them to go away. And, and that started to get a little bit hostile. Verbally, that's as far as it was ever going to go there. I, st I started laughing. Um, I think I laughed at something that they said. It was a, they made it funny. He said something funny. And I laughed. And he looked at me. I thought, oh. That's when I, had, I, I knew I had to keep an eye on him. Just generally, you know. I thought, oh. He gave me a look then. But then he went to the right, to the left of me, where his table was. And I saw him with my peripheral, and I could see him actually creeping. Because he wasn't behind me, he was trying to get behind me, but he had to go like, like that, from a distance. He wasn't. <laughs> and I could see him. Because when I'm in a restaurant, or a pub, or in the street, I, I'm i watching everything. And maybe that's, there's a few reasons for that. I guess if you work in a nightclub, you get used to having to keep an eye on everybody. There's a lot of drunk people, people doing things that perhaps they shouldn't. And, or just, and also keeping people safe. So I always felt it was a responsibility to make sure everyone was okay. So I've had a few jobs in catering as well, restaurants, places that you kind of got to be on the ball. You know, even in the chip shop, you're juggling. You're not supposed to. You're not supposed. You're not supposed to juggle, but you know, I thought it'd be fun. Got sacked for it. No, you, you're juggling different things. So you've got the f different fryers. You've got the customers waiting for stuff. You're all getting orders. You're taking money. You, you know, there's lots of different things you're doing. So I got used to that kind of keeping an eye on different, on the people. To see if someone new came in. When I had bar jobs, you got to see when a new person comes in. Or when another person comes from a table of already had a drink. And you perhaps try and remember what they've already had. And, you know, so you've got to really sort of keep a check on who's who. In the nightclub, people come in. You gotta know who's paid. If someone walks in the door, you gotta know if they've just come in because they've been out there smoking, a paid customer, or if they're coming in for the first time and they need to pay twelve pound because they've just walked in later, you know, during the break or something. So I don't know. I'm just going on, but that's where the peripheral kind of kicked in. 
so I kind of get to keep a check on everything around me. Um, it might be paranoia, it might just be... Anyway, yeah, so he, he did, he tried to hit me with a walking stick. Got kicked out of the restaurant. It's a boring ending to that. Everyone's gone now. Everyone's gone. You just wanted to be part of the podcast, didn't you? Just wanted to be part of the podcast. Wanted to be included because you know anything you write, anything you, any comments you say now, it's just going to be us that hear it. Maybe a hundred people on Facebook will listen. But on the podcast, thousands will hear it. Thousands of people will hear, but not not on not on this video. Ah, hey, it's all about being famous, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, Molly, right, boobies, come on. <laughs> what do you want to know? Before I go, as there's only a few of us, ask me anything, come on. You've only got a couple of minutes. Mm, come on, Molly. I've already got a few things I'd like to say to you. <laughs> I think the answer is yes. Definitely yes. <laughs> come on, think some questions. Definitely would. <laughs> no, go on, think it's anything you want. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Molly's on the spot. Come on, Molly, you're not the only one there. There's other people. Come on, whoever's listening. Any question, any any anything you want. I'm not necessarily going to answer it, but you can ask me anything you want to. Um, who else is here? I don't know. It's According to the thing, there's three people left. Uh, the, you know, the number... Th I don't know why I'm giving you what number three is. Basically, this is almost like a, a private... Recording. <gasps> so come on. The battery's going to run out in a minute. The battery's going to run out. <gasps> the battery. No. I'm just going to stare into the video camera. Until you ask me. Ask me something. Rover. I'll call him Rover. I have to be care I have to be careful because my friend doesn't want to be on social media or sort of really mentioned by his name, so I try not to mention his dog's name either. Does that make sense? He's 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 very private like that, so I Yeah, I try not to. I kind of got to be careful. So I'm going to call him Rover, just for the sake of... I mean, I personally, I don't care, but I got to, I try to... Res I want to respect his wishes for that one. I mean, it's the same as if I, if I was in a similar position. Um, not similar to it, because there's no particular reason why I could see that he'd want to, but if I had a friend that was making videos on YouTube... And I didn't want to have anything, I didn't want to be on camera, and I didn't want to be talked about or recognised, I would, uh, you know, I'd, I'd kind of want that person to respect that. But I do talk about him, but only, 
I never go into personal detail. I, I, like, oh, we were watching TV today or we went shopping and stuff. But I don't... Um, nothing that you c anyone could identify him from. Not that they'd need to or want to, but just... You know, I think everyone's got... Um, yeah, he is. He's cool. Uh, he's... You know, everyone's got a right to their own... anonymity if you want or whatever is not everybody likes to be in front of a camera no I don't I know I'm natural in front of a camera ex super sexy in that but that's a curse sometimes you know it's to be this damn good looking is hard work it is not easy uh, easy to maintain, obviously, because it's so natural. But I'm kidding. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't think. I personally don't want to be in front of a camera anymore. But tonight, for some reason, I felt very relaxed. Um. Yeah, some people can't hand. They don't. It's not their thing. But then, it's it's like anything, isn't it? I suppose, is there's things that he can do that I wouldn't be able to do. You know. So. It, he's got his talents. Well, oh, you can use the word talents, but he's got his abilities. I've got my abilities. They could be called talents. But we've got. We've all got our own things, haven't we, that we can do easily. Yeah, I think that's it. I don't think it's um, showing off or bragging or even almost it's, it can't be denied really that I'm able to talk absolute rubbish continuously. Um, I have that ability to just talk about nothing for long periods of time whether on camera or on, po on a podcast and it's probably the furthest thing away from a skill really but it's good to embrace what you're good at yeah exactly I'm embracing it talking crap is my skill sometimes it's good to embrace what you're good at sometime. Ooh. You're, is that being rude? Or you talk about something that you're really good at? That perhaps you... <laughs> My laptop's just run out. But it's okay, because I, I finished the recording. Um, and it's saved, so which is good. I will have to edit it before uploading it in a minute. So what are you good at then, Molly? You're really good at drinking wine. Is it wine you said drinking? Oh, okay. Um, sure, we, I do, but honestly, I know I'm joking around and stuff, but I do believe, yeah, with every ounce of my, of my being, I believe that everybody Pretty much. You always have to have the exception. Okay. There's always an exception. Um, possibly. But everybody. Pretty much. Has. Something that they're good at. Or. Something. That they could. Be good at. But they don't know about it yet. Does that make sense? So. From a boxing fan perspective, I know, I'm pretty certain, that there are people out there, men and women, men, both men and women box now, that could be like super duper world champions if they'd gone down that route of learning to box and they it was something they were interested in. 
So I'm thinking of a man, for example, uh, there's someone that I know about who was well known in a town that I used to live in. He was well known for being like the toughest man. And he actually, <laughs> without getting into violence and stuff, he actually beat up a former world boxing champion in a bar fight at a nightclub like a few years back. This is someone that could have been a world champion because his skill was, I thought, well, fighting. That was his skill. That was what he was best at. But unfortunately, this was something that sends you to prison. He gets you arrested and can, you know, if you don't, find a way to harness it or get someone that helps you then most people with the mentality of being boxers wouldn't become boxers because what they want to do is fight and you don't need to go into a gym to be fighting you just need to say the wrong thing to the wrong person it's the same with lifting weights or with people I think singing for every Mariah Carey, I know I'm a bit outdated by mentioning her, but for every like amazing singer out there, and there's lots that are famous, for every one of them, there's hundreds, if not thousands, of other singers equally as good, if not even better, vocally. But they might only do it in a shower. You know, they might have zero confidence in their own voice or no one's ever said anything nice. No one's ever said to them, oh, by the way, that's, yeah, that's a nice singing voice you've got. I remember what I said to someone once, and I said, it's, you sound really good in the shower. Instead of, oh, that's really nice of you. Like, what were you doing in the shower? How did you get into my house? You know, it's always a negative for some reason. No. But I'm saving that for my next podcast. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna redo that one. I'm gonna write it down. So yeah, I think everybody's got a skill, a talent, or something that they can really enjoy doing. And I don't really think it has to be anything necessarily. That someone's good at if you could enjoy it and be happy whether it's knitting or whether it's drinking wine I wish people would give compliments so I don't know why I'm reading it out because but anyone watching this will might be see that anyway or oh, 10% now well I remember I've been in places, jobs or around people when I was younger <coughs> excuse me and I'd sing, I'd be singing maybe they'd catch me singing Is that, oh, I thought I got um, there's a box that, oh, I'm not stripping off for you I just thought I saw something weird on my chest but it was a screen there is I'd like to I'd like to, <laughs> to strip I was just thinking that would be nice. Yeah, I agree. It's... Yeah, the amount of people who say, oh, you sing, oh... Like, I'd be singing this, like, can you whistle? Like, it's like a, a put-down in England. It's very... If you hear someone singing, it's almost like you've got to put them down for something. And it's not personal, it's just... England's a very, very negative place very very negative place I realise I'm being quite broad with that judgement because I've only ever really lived in the south east of England mainly, I did live up north for a while but it's very negative um, like how are you not too bad that's the, the standard answer to how are you today? Not too bad. How was your weekend? Not too bad. How are you feeling? Could be worse.
Yeah, maybe. Um, I some I'm okay to be around negative people. I can be negative as well, but I try and do it with humour. Not always, not always, but I can really get caught up in it, and I'm trying to keep away from it. But if I was to keep away from negative people or people that were being negative, I'd I'd never talk to anyone. Um, it's not that they're always negative, and I try and make it light, but unfortunately, life isn't at the moment. Life's not very light to me around. It's I've noticed. Um, I've really noticed that people are very dull. Like they, their eyes are dull. Their facial expressions are quite dull. There's not. Doesn't it look like people are having much fun? It sounds like a stupid thing to say, probably, but you know, Monday mornings, people are going to work maybe before the lockdown again, but people were going to work who were able to go back to work, but they hadn't done anything at the weekend because everything's still pretty much closed. You know, people not been able to all get together and go to the pub. You know, a group of 20 people from work and, you know, go to nightclubs and go into festivals during the summer and go into football matches. That's a big thing over here in England. Football matches is massive. It's been their advert a couple of years ago for the new football season is this is our religion. Literally, I don't know how they got away with that, but they said, you know, for foot, it's so massive. Um, I don't know other countries kind of what the big thing is. I know in America, baseball, basketball, America, well, it's not called American football in America, is it? But soccer over there is not such a big thing. But here, and people haven't been able to go to football matches. And some it's their life. It's almost, I've worked with people who pretty much from Sunday morning till Saturday afternoon, I've been looking forward to that Saturday afternoon match, football match. It's been the thing that's keeping them going. You know, I really... Because some people, they, you know, all they do is work to pay for everything that's got to be paid for, to keep the family, the house or whatever. And that's their one thing. Maybe to have a couple of drinks before going to the match. That's their one thing that they look forward to. Which is a bit sad because if they've got kids at home and a, a wife or a husband, you'd think that there'd be more to look forward to. But I think it's affected the nation. I really do. I don't know how it's affected the rest of the world, but here, I've got I've been, I've got to go. Thanks for everything. <laughs> I can't believe I bored you so much, Molly, that you had to. You're just leaving me. I'm gonna go now. That's embarrassing. I'm not gonna post this video. I'm not. So forget that. I'm gonna go now, Molly. So I can't stay and talk to you anymore. But send me a private message if you want to. Okay, I'm going to go, so take care. Happy New Year, everyone. <laughs> um, remember, it's a brilliant New Year. Have fun. Lots of love. Bye. Yeah.